series in their first two series. This weekend started with a dominant performance from the Nats pitching staff. But yesterday, the Phillies bounced back, scoring a season high eight runs. Today, the rubber match featuring Aaron Harang and Gio Gonzalez on a perfect Sunday for baseball. It is absolutely wonderful at Nationals Park today. Racing presidents out there doing their PR work for the ball club. Yeah, the Nats are in first place in the NL East, still by a game and a half over the Mets. Business to take care of, a series to win here today. So the Phillies have been pretty good. They've won eight of their last 11. Sometimes you have to look at how bad things were yesterday to realize how great this team played for the better part of a month. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday during the broadcast. When you play so well for a 22-game stretch, eight and four, how much mental focus it takes, how much physical energy it takes, and all the comebacks in the 18 out of 22. And yesterday, one run, so what? 208 runs leads the NL. Four errors yesterday, so what? Zero in the previous seven games. 5 and 0 rector after each of the last five losses. So it, you expected the bounce back today. You were due for a clunker. That's what yesterday was. It was just one game. So you're trying to win your eighth series in a row here today against the Phillies. That's our 25, actually 25 and 18 on the year, three and one home stand. Haven't lost consecutive games in a while. And Gio now, part of that, because the Nats have won his last four starts. Gio's stuff has been great this year, but he has to stay away from the big inning. If you remember the last start, nine ground ball outs to start the game in the four-run fourth inning. The wheels kind of came off a lot like Steven Strasburg in the third yesterday. So if Gio could stay away from the big inning, which he has to against Aaron Harang, who has a 1-8-2 ERA, his best start, and a Phillies pitcher's best start since Roy Halladay. So he's doing some special stuff in Philadelphia. Yeah, and Harang doesn't blow people away. He just uses the strike zone up and down, in and out. Ian Desmond's been using the bat lately. He's hitting 316 at home this year. He's on an eight-game hitting streak, and you're seeing just about the entirety of that streak. 13 doubles, seventh in the National League. So when this bat is alive, the Nats are really hard to beat. Looking for some offense today. Bank for the achiever and you. 
by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by Land Rover, above and beyond. Here come the Nats, Danny Espinosa, Ryan Zimmerman. Kids get to greet them as they enter the field. What a great throw that is for the youngsters down by the first base dugout. What a day. Clear skies, 79 degrees. Flag's not doing much of anything right now. This is one of those days when the ball could be carrying, but we'll have to see about it with these two pitchers who are guys both hard to hit, but hard to get back-to-back -back hits against. And here come the Phillies hitting 241. Still the fewest runs and homers in Major League Baseball despite their explosion yesterday. Freddie Galvis third among shortstops hitting at 311 in a bit of a tailspin. He's 0 for 7 and 3 for his last 24. And uh, by the way, there are three Phillies in the lineup today who haven't had an at-bat in this series. So Gio facing a lot of right-handers. Well, remember Gio's last start. He matched a season high, giving up six earned runs. Nats won that game against the Yankees, 8-6. to six. That was on the 19th here at the ballpark. Five innings, six hits, six earned runs. Gave up a home run, struck out two, walked one through 85 pitches. And if you remember how that start began it was nine ground ball outs four three four three six three six three four three one three and a couple more to shortstop and one more to second base then the wheels kind of came off in the fourth inning he gave up four runs out of nowhere kind of lost his release point lost his command So Gio, three and two on there. He's had an odd career against the Phillies. Went five and one with a 2-2-2, two, 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 his first seven career starts against Philadelphia. But in the last six, he's gone one and four with a 4.33 ERA. A defense today, Clint Robinson getting the start in left field. He and Desmond, Yunel Escobar left side, Danny Espinosa, Ryan Zimmerman right side, and Jose Lobaton behind the plate. Second time in this series that Clint Robinson gets a start. Out there in left field against a right-handed pitcher. Sean O'Sullivan the other night. Aaron Harang here today. And here's Gio to Ben Revere, who's had pretty good success against him. Some of that goes back to the American League. Nine for 22. First pitch of the game. We're right there on the inner half. We're underway at 137. Revere in the series. Three hits. An RBI. A walk, and he scored three runs. Escobar on the grass at third. This one pulled right side. Espinosa couldn't get to it. Got a piece of it. Phillies have their leadoff man on. So Revere now four for nine in this weekend set. Ben May is the junior member of this umpiring crew. Bruce Dreckman at first. Alfonso Marquez, there he is, the crew chief at second base, and Dan Bellino at third. Nationals at home, 13 and 7. Even though they lost yesterday, they still won seven of the last eight here, and eight out of ten. Phillies have the runner on the move and a swing and a foul as Ryan Sandberg gets aggressive early in the game. Well, I don't think that was a hit and run, and the reason I don't think it was is because Ben Revere was sliding into second base. He was getting ready to slide. He didn't really look in. And I think Freddie Galvis may be trying to take advantage of that hole created with Danny Espinosa covering second. Saw an opportunity to get a hit. More of a run and hit right there than a hit and run. Hit and run, if you don't know, you have to swing at the pitch. Run and hit, it's kind of up to you. Revere, seventh in the league with nine stolen bases. So Gio gets ahead of the first two hitters. Galvis from the right side has been really impressive. 16 for 35, batting 457. He's got his left foot, it's about three-fourths of it, out of the box. He'll swing it around. Is that a, is that a violation? <laughs> Is he going to get a letter from the league because he doesn't have two feet in the box? I don't know. Does your whole foot have to be out? Watch it. It creeps. It starts right there. Then it goes further and further. One, One more. ball and two strikes. And look where it ends up. Down and away, and you think he might be susceptible to that. 
with that stance, and Gio takes advantage. Yeah, the sinker's been good all year long from Gio Gonzalez. And yeah, you see a guy with a wide open stance, what do you do? You turn over the fastball and watch the subtle movement. And you'll see this from both guys today. I think it's the theme of the day. Gio's stuff way better than Aaron Harang's, but Aaron has been pitching so well. Their fastballs have subtle movement to them. It's tough to pick up even for a hitter. Their off-speed pitch, especially Harang's subtle movement to it, but just enough to keep it off the barrel. And I think that's why Harang's had so much success. There's Darren Ruff, who's really had good success against Gio. Six for 18, two homers, six RBIs in the career matchup. The first at bat of the series for the 28-year-old outfielder, infielder from Omaha, Nebraska, played at Creighton. And he's hitting just 220 overall. But he's got some pop. You make a mistake, he can hit it a long way. I have a little thing on my scorecard today, Carp. It says strike stolen. And I'm going to keep track of how many strikes that Jose Lobaton presents with his framing ability today and how many strikes he gets Gio Gonzalez. Nice. Target inner half here. And Gio gave the good move that time. Got the throw down low. Ryan Zimmerman didn't have to move the mitt too far with Ben Revere coming back. As mentioned, Bruce Dreckman, the umpire over there. Geo's 189th career start. So as I mentioned, that kind of odd thing going on with the Phillies overall six and five in 13 career starts. Slide step, varied his tempo, quick delivery of the plate. And if you remember the last time Gio faced the Phillies, Ben Revere went first move on Gio. They tried to test Ryan Zimmerman to see if he could relay it to second. He did it perfectly. That's why you're seeing so many throwovers here. One ball, one strike. Runner holding in there with 83. And Gio throwing his pitches for strikes so far. That was presented well by Lobatone. I already put this is the first one that might have been low. Watch him pick it up, present it as a strike, gets the call. There's your first stolen strike by Jose Lobatone. One two pitch. Time given. Late. Mets are underway at Pittsburgh. Jonathan Nees, Francisco Liriano over there. The Nats lead the Mets, who lost yesterday by a game and a half in the East. Escobar Desmond in pole positions over on the left side. And a 1-2 to Darren Ruff. Breaking ball. One hopper, Desmond. Not easy, but Espinosa has plenty of time because Desmond got it to him so well. The Nats turn their 36th double play of the year. They'll take on Aaron Hooray in a moment.
Double play ball gets Geo out of the first inning. Nats are seventh in the league in average. First in runs. It's tied with Cincinnati. Second in home runs. And we're still waiting for Clint Robinson to hit that first big league home run. But how about him against the Phillies? Six for 13 in four games. Good reason to have him in left field with that left-handed bat today against Aaron Harang, who's four and five career against Washington. But for the last year or so, FP, he's been tough on our ball club. He's been tough on everybody this year. 182 ERA, first Phillies pitcher since Roy Halladay in 2010 to post a sub two ERA over his first nine starts of his season. So he'll move the fastball around and averages 91 the last start. He'll sink it, he'll cut it, slider, curveball change to go with it. And he hasn't allowed an earned run in each of his last two starts. And he's 0-1 on the weekend already. He lost to Aaron Barrett in the standoff. Denard Spann hits one a ton to right center. Look at this ball fly off the Geico sign. About 385 feet from home plate. And that's Denard Spann's first hit of this series. Well, if you were like me, you were wondering, is this ball going to get out of here? And Denard Spann got a fastball in the outer half of the plate and pulls it to right center field off the top of the wall. Watch where this one lands, or hits, I should say. Maybe more in the middle of the wall, but a leadoff double for Denard Spann. There goes the no-hitter, and that's how this one starts for the Nats. Washington scoring only three runs the first two games. Phillies accomplishing that by keeping Denard Spann off base, but not here. So here's Ian Desmond, two hits, two RBIs in the series. Harang misses outside. So his series numbers, and then over the last week and a half, Ian with an eight-game hitting streak, 11 hits, two homers, seven batted in. And he has a career homer against Darren Harang. Up the middle, Span retreats. And that made it a little close at first base as Freddie Galvis took a little reach for the runner. Well, the interesting Spann. situation there, FP, with the ball being hit sharply like that. Well, he had a brain cramp. If the ball's hit to, to the left side of you, you advance to third, and you saw the Denard Span freeze right there. That'd be the first one to tell you that's a brain cramp. He should be on third. And you saw the hesitation. Can uh, base runners have a hard time picking up the ball in the daytime as well? No, just every once in a while, it'll happen to you throughout the course of a season. If it's, it's hit right at you, you kind of freeze. But the rule of thumb is, is, you, is you draw a line right down the middle of your body. And if it's hit toward you, the left side of your body when you're facing home, you go to third. If it's hit to the right side of your body when you're facing home, you go back and watch where this ball is. It's hit to Denard's left side. And if he simply shuffles off and continues to third, he would have made it. Shortstop going away from the play. That's why you do it that way. Escobar two for eight this weekend. Big rip on one and oh. Still hitting 322, which is eighth in the league. On base percentage at 377. He's in the top seven in the league looking for his 50th hit. Gets jammed. That's a flare right field line. And it'll go foul by about eight feet. Uncatchable Jeff Francoeur out there in right field instead of Sizemore today. You see the defense for the Phillies. Rivera, Herrera, Francoeur, Galvis Franco left side, Hernandez Ruff right side, and Cameron Ruff behind the plate. You know, I'm just thinking about something. A small aspect of batting practice that I used to work really hard at is reading balls off the bat when you're running the bases. And you get to third base, you read down angles, you get to second base, you read balls to your left, balls to your right. Would I tag up on this ball? You do about five at every base just to stay fresh. And, you know, a lot of times if you hit in the cage, you don't get that same kind of read off the bat. And that's, that's why Denard stayed there. Pulling the ball over left side, Franco, two outs. Harang has to deal with Harper in a moment. He's had trouble with Bryce. But look where he is in giving home runs up per nine innings. 
walks and hits per innings pitch, the ERA five, and the opponent's batting average, number five in all of the National League. Four and three record career. He's 126 and 131. Does he get anything to hit right here? Yeah. First base open. Why would you? And on top of that, the fact that Bryce is nine for 20 against him with a home run. Well, Harang's a veteran. He's going to try to nibble. See if Bryce will expand the zone with him. It's a great shot of number 34 helmet. Harper didn't see that ball too well. That was a late swing on 91. Yeah, so 342 with runners in scoring position. 39 RBI, second to John Carlos Stanton, who has 40. And that's well inside, two and one. Price in this series, one for six with a homer and a walk. Went 0 for 4 yesterday, first time that's happened in almost three weeks. And Harang still nibbling. Well, I would imagine on most of those three and one counts, first base was not open. We'll see if he gets anything to hack on here. Harang did. Ball deflects off the pitcher. Harper hustling, and he's safe at first. So Bryce Harper with his 48th hit of the year, one behind Escobar. Almost looked like Bryce was sitting on the changeup 3-1. He knew that Harang's not going to throw a fastball. He stayed back and drilled a bullet right off Harang. And where did it get him? Like right in the hamstring, maybe, or the hip. Two outs, it's up to Ryan Zimmerman. Sacrificed his leg to keep this a 0-0 game. Yeah, that was ticketed up the middle. Surprised he saw anything there to hit the 3-1 count. Ryan, 6 for 20, career against Harang with a homer, three RBIs. And he's the number six RBI guy in the National League with 31. First pitch, 92, and Ryan had a good cut. Took the Nationals five innings to get two hits yesterday. Matt Williams' offense still the most runs in the National League, 208. We see how sneaky fast Harang is. That's 92, but you know, throughout his career, and I played with him in Oakland, he was a guy that didn't light up a radar gun, but because of his delivery, the deception in his delivery, the ball seems to jump on hitters, and you'll see a lot of tardy swings and hitting counts. Was that 02 or 03? I think it was 02. Yeah, that would have been his rookie year when he made 15 starts for you guys and won five games. It was in AAA, though, in Sacramento. And the breaking ball. Oh, the home plate umpire, Ben May, punches out Ryan Zimmerman. And now Ryan wants to know why he doesn't ask for help. That's a man who hardly ever has a word for an umpire at all. And the inning's over. A couple of ground balls, a strikeout, two singles. We'll have another look at that when we come back.
Catch swing. Watch the umpire and where he's looking. He's not following the pitch down the way. He's looking up. So what he's seeing is Ryan Zimmerman's bat more than the pitch location. Even though, right, look where he's looking right here. He's looking straight out. He's not looking down at the pitch. He doesn't follow the pitch. His focus is on the bat. Even though he doesn't go. We're going to show you the side swing right here. So definitely missed the call. But he didn't follow the pitch. He was more focused on Zimmerman's bat. And that's why he pointed at him. And that's why he rung him up. Usually you watch the umpire's head track the baseball down and away. Then you don't focus on the bat. Interesting. Very interesting. Good catch. Top of the second. This is Franco leading off. Well, this what we've seen so far appears to be a pretty exciting young baseball player at the age of 22. Had a home run here yesterday. Three for eight with two RBIs in the series. And he's 10 for 35 in nine games. Honda do up. And what these Phillies, Franco, Frank, Cor, and Hernandez have done against Southpaws. On a 3 0, Geo paints. Out of play. Right side. Franco signed with the Phillies at the age of 17. Four years in the minors, four plus. He hit 275 with 66 home runs. Gio with that breaking ball coming in from the outside. Ian Desmond guns to Zimmerman. Good battle back from a 3 0 count for the Nats lefty. Speaking of left handers, what the Phillies have done against them this year. They've hit him pretty well. Put the ball in play for the most part. Most of it's on the ground. No homers to speak of, really. So they are a contact team against lefties, but not doing a whole lot of damage with it. STG inside the numbers. Well, we got breakdowns for everything, don't we? It's amazing. Frank Court not getting a whole lot of playing time lately, except against lefties. That's a base hit. His 23rd hit of the year in his 97th at bat. And that's 7 for 18 for him career against Gio Gonzalez. Next up, Cesar Hernandez, who's spelling... Chase Utley at second base today. And just closing the book on that check swing of Ryan Zerman, the league has to change that rule where you just ask for help automatically. If you're not sure as a home plate umpire, you can't watch the bat, the ball. There's a lot of things going on. They're ha all happening very quickly. And with all the rule changes in baseball, hey, let's check every single time. Just ask. Yeah, it takes two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. We show you the side swing on the replay because that's the best view to tell. And who has the best view or that same view? The first base umpire and a right-handed hitter. The third base umpire and a left-handed hitter. Yeah. So why not ask every single time? 1-0. That ball cued right off the end of the bat on a changeup, 84. Counts even 1-1. One, one. Geo, 10 pitches, 8 strikes first inning thanks to the double play ball. In a position to get another one here. Hernandez runs well, has not hit in to a double play on the ground. But our numbers a moment ago showed us the Phillies hit a lot of ground balls against lefties for some reason. Another big crowd here at Nationals Park. Been a great week at the turnstiles. Well, how about that? A lefty getting a double play ball from the Phillies. And Gio gets a pair of 6 4 threes to take care of six hitters in the first two innings.
Robinson's Twitter handle is Bat Hoarder, which tells you all you need to know about Robinson's love for bats and collecting them. This started when he was in the minor leagues. He was in the Royals organization, and guys like Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustakas, their top prospects, they'd pick up a bat, not really like it, and toss it to the side, and Robinson would snatch it up. He said good bats can cost 100 bucks, and if you're a big league, if you've gotten a big signing bonus, or if your agent has a hookup, you're covered. If not, you have to resort to lower quality bats or buying good ones yourself. Up here in the big leagues, teams buy the high quality bats. They don't in the minors, and so Robinson became a bat hoarder. High fly ball, left center. Oduvel Herrera fighting the sun, which, as we all know, on these Sunday games at 135, is right overhead behind home plate. I'm a promo hoarder. <laughs> Nats fans and yoga fans, come out to the ballpark Sunday, June 7th for the inaugural yoga in the outfield. I want to do this. Carp, this is all you. You do I love yoga. yoga. I take it. You out there. I want to see you do this. With the purchase of this special game ticket, enjoy 45-minute yoga session in the outfield with Bob Carpenter. No, we're going to be, on, we're gonna be <laughs> on the plane to New York. Sorry. Oh, we are? Train, right. maybe. Well, I wish I could see this. Yoga in the outfield tickets are limited, so go to nationals.com slash yoga and get your stretch on. My favorite pose is the dead man's pose on dead body pose on the floor after about a half hour of that stuff. Fly ball to Ben Revere and Jose Lobatone first pitch swinging and a couple of quick outs in the air for Aaron Narang here second inning. Danny Espinosa will be next. Beautiful day at Nationals Park where the home team has won 13 out of 20 this year. The Nats are a game and a half up on the Mets in the East. No score in Pittsburgh yet. They're in the top of the second. New York is. No score here. Danny Espinosa, 5 for 12 career with a walk against Darren Harang. Shift on. Cesar Hernandez, not that deep in right field. He's only about eh, maybe. Not even 15 feet outside the infield dirt there. You know why? Does he not have the arm Danny Espinosa does? No, you, you played the depth and the shift based on the speed of the runner. Got it. So the slower the runner, the deeper you can get at second base on the shift. And Danny Espinosa could run, so he's not that deep. Danny's going to pull one right side. It's looking like a hit. And Aaron Horan couldn't do much with it after it took him a long run to get there. So the Nats have three hits in their first eight batters today. Nice bunt, Danny Espinosa. And exactly what we're talking about. You see the, the shift on the second baseman back. If you can get it by Aaron Harang, it's a hit. He does perfectly. And you see the indecision by Darren Ruff at first base. That allowed a hit for Danny Espinosa. Nicely done. Here's Gio. So at least it turns over the batting order here. At worst, Span would lead off the third. Geo this year 0 for 10. <laughs> 0 for 1 against Aaron Harang. You just never know when Geo's going to muscle up and hit one out of the ballpark. He's done it once each of the three previous years. He's due. Target away, and that's paint on the outside edge. Do you have a yoga mat? A mat? Yeah, I do. Did you bring it with you? Yes, it's it's here with me. Not not in the booth. Yeah, I haven't seen you do any yoga during commercial breaks recently. Well, I might give you a pose or two. I, I haven't had my warm up though. Here's Cesar Hernandez, and that's a quick inning. Don't pull anything. I don't want to be play by play. <laughs> You're not alone, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>
Enjoy a cold one on this holiday weekend. Look forward to Miller time later in today's game. That's brought to you by Miller Light. Everybody out on the river. Memorial Day weekend. Love little, it. Uh, little staycation action, huh? Staying yeah. at home. Yeah, a little bit jealous. Well, this is interesting, FP, on the basis of what happened here yesterday with four errors. The Nats have had six games this year with two or more, and defense translates into winning, coupled with good pitching and some timely hitting. Uh, that one error stat is shocking to me. Seven and nine with one error. Seven, eight, nine for the Phils. Herrera, Rupp, and Harangue. Oduval Herrera, two for seven in this series with an RBI and a walk. First time he's been in the lineup against Gio Gonzalez, who has five ground ball outs, by the way. As that piece said, nine and in three innings to start against the Yankees. First game of this homestand. Ben May's got a nice low zone, and Gio Gonzalez has taken advantage. He's pounding the bottom half so far. 21 pitches, 15 strikes, first two innings. That's a really nice breaking ball at 79. Target in. Wow, there's a low zone for you. Strike three, we heard Ben May say, and Herrera froze before walking away. Okay, there's number two on the strike stolen. Watch Jose Lobatone frame up the low pitch, presented as a strike. And Ben May buying what Jose Lobatone is selling. Look at the frame. Picks it up, puts it right there. May looks at it, calls it a strike. So that's two balls. <laughs> They've been called strikes because of Jose Lobaton so far. Here's the catcher, Cameron Rupp. That's three. <laughs> and for those of you that don't know, you, you take a near strike or a pitch you think could be a strike and you make it more of a strike. You don't pull balls back into the zone. Because umpires will see that. I mean, that right there, he just took a ball that was borderline and kind of just a subtle turn of his wrist on an inside pitch and made it look like it had way more plate than it did. No balls, two strikes. And then he puts the breaking ball in the dirt. That is nasty and low, and they now know they better be hacking two down. Pitcher coming up. Aaron Harang has two hits this year. He's an 092 career batter. 0 for 3 against Geo. And that's good for the Nats. That would have been ball three. But just check this out. This is a strike two to Rupp. And look at him just take the pitch on the black and, and put it more in the strike zone. Just very subtly, soft hands. I love watching Lobatone catch. This ball will be foul. Out of play. Counts even 2-2. Two, two. And Wilson Ramos does a great job of it, too. But Jose Lobatone, in my mind, is in the upper echelon in the, in the, in the, in the Molina kind of group when it comes to being real soft with his hands, letting the ball get deep, not reaching out to get it, 
keeping his elbows close to his body and then just just manipulating the baseball very subtly at the end and Ramos does a nice job too but I think Lobotone's one of the best in baseball. 2-2 Two -two, target in. Harang will foul it straight down. Gio Gonzalez strikes out the side. Four on the day. Nine batters in three innings. So now time to get this guy some runs. He's got it all going on today. Right places. That's W USA 9 Morning News Difference. Join us tomorrow morning, starting at 4:25 on WUSA 9. I'll just be getting in. I'm glad they don't rate the smarts of <laughs> baseball broadcast crews. I mean, we're going to Chicago. <laughs> day game after a day game, FP. Yes. First thing I do is circle that on the schedule when it comes out. When's the trip to Chicago? It is today. Business to take care of. Denard Span hit one 385 first time up. And had he been able to advance on that ground ball that Ian Desmond hit, he might have been able to score later in the inning. Bryce Harper did get a hit, but you never know how things might have worked out. Desmond swinging the bat well. Span finally has a hit in this series. That's going to be popped up out of play to the left side. So Denard one for nine against the Phillies here. In his career, five for 14 against Aaron Harang, who's kind of reinvigorating his career here at the age of 37, had a birthday two weeks ago. Span out that way again, but cruising to it is Herrera. Maybe playing a step or two deeper this time after Denard's double first time up able to get to that one Inside the numbers with Jeep and Ian Desmond At home outstanding on the road scuffling at 185 look at Freddie Galvis at 391 at the bank in Philadelphia You know, I get that stat. I always felt better at home because you have a, a set routine at home. And ball players are creatures of habit. And your routine varies on the road. Different ballpark, different cage, different times when you hit. Chicago. There's I'm gonna yeah. check your career numbers in Chicago. 
<laughs> That's a cup killer, man. Check him. Okay. 0-2. Oh, it's the only team I played good against. Desmond to right. Ball falling. And it's a nine-game hitting streak. You don't have to kill it every time to get a streak alive. And Ian went out and got that. So in this series now, he's three for nine. Well, just a nice job of cutting your swing down and putting the ball in play. You like to see more of that for me and Desmond. You think maybe the average will get around 300 if with two strikes he makes adjustments like that. Nice swing by Desmond. Escobar next. Thanks to Desmond's hit, a lot of hitting room right side. He's going. He's got a lean going. He is. Maybe too big of a lean. And Harang held the ball on him for a little while. Desmond won for three this year. The Nats and the Dodgers, the least running teams in the National League with 11 stolen bases. His lead was actually shorter than on the first pitch when he draws that throw. No score. 0 4 0 Nats, 0 2 0 Phils. The rubber game of the series. Nationals trying to win their eighth straight series. That's Escobar, man. Early in the count, he'll air it out. And then he'll shorten up with two strikes. And even though that wasn't a two strike swing by Desmond, sometimes it's nice to see him just kind of take a little out of the swing and put it into play. Bigger lead. Up and in, two and one. Escobar, he'll do some diving, looking for something he can drive the other way. He's still hitting, coming into this one, 375 over his last 17 games. Quite a bit here this afternoon already. Well, Harang's leaving more pitches out over the plate today than I've seen him in the past. And he's a guy that has to pitch to a corner, inside, outside, up and down with the fastball. Throw a curveball for a strike early, bounce a curveball late in the count, but he's getting a lot of plate early in this game. Bryce Harper with two outs. Celebrate the season with American Standard All-Star Sales Event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Who's hot? Well, one guy's in the game today. Ryan Howard sitting this one out with Gio Gonzalez on the mound. But Bryce Harper, how about that slugging percentage since May 3rd? Wow. It's pretty good. They have Brandon Belt hacking for the Giants. They're only two games back of the Dodgers in the West now. Bryce Harper, two for seven in the series. Ten for 21 career against Aaron Harang with his base hit here today. I just love how his at bats have become an event in and of themselves.
And this is where it usually gets interesting. Very rarely have you seen a pitcher go after Bryce in a no two count. And before you know it, it's 3 2 with a bunch of foul balls. Let's see if the veteran harangue tries to finish it here quickly. Or if he starts nibbling. are ahead today for nothing but John Carlo doesn't have any RBIs in that game yet. Bryce won behind him. And he'll look at that fastball away at 93. I mean how many times have you seen Bryce 0-2 to 3-2 this year? It just it, it happens every time. You get ahead of Bryce Harper. You try to make the perfect pitch on the black. See if he'll chase with you. Next thing you know you got to 3-2 and here we go. Happens seems like almost every day. And now Desmond gets a head start. They're playing Bryce really deep, so this head start for the runner could be big. Desmond off. Harper fouls it. And here come the foul balls. I mean, this is like every at bat he's had all season long. So he hit that ball hard off his leg. Away early. Looks like in late. It's on the Mercedes Benz at bat pitch track and a 3 2 again. It'll be the seventh pitch of this AB. And another foul ball. <laughs> I mean, he is making pitchers work to get him out. Kind of a classic matchup here. Wiley veteran 37 years of age the exciting 22 year old in the batter's box and a 3 2 again he draws the walk and Bryce Harper has walked for the 39th time this year heads up play and then Desmond heading. keeps going to third had time been given third base umpire Dan Bellino is telling Ian Desmond the time was out and he's got to go back to second base. Well if you remember in in Boston with Mookie Betts when he stole second base in a shift he got right up and went to third and watching it Desmond heads up right here he's looking at Franco he's got his head down and where's the timeout. I, Bellino, I saw the home plate umpire Ben May raise both of his hands. When he was standing next to Cameron Rupp, right there. And maybe because the Bat Boys were on the field, but why is there timeout? Uh, I'm trying to figure out. I guess with two outs, being on third isn't that big a deal, but a uh, heads up play by Desmond goes for nine. Well, you know, being on third base with two outs could take away some of that breaking stuff, low and away to Zimmerman. We'll see. But it, it did look like the home plate umpire had his hands up. Great. Baseball IQ though by Desmond out there. And that's coming back to the inside corner on Ryan Zimmerman. Who was called out on what appeared to be a check swing first time up. There's that slider away. Harang will barehand it and throw and get it to Darren Ruff. The Nats have had base runners. They've stranded five now on four hits and a walk. Scoreless after three.
He's got two. Both 6-4-3 variety. First one into the first inning. Second one into the second inning. So the sinker's been good for Gio. He's been pounding the strike zone. Aggressive with all his pitches. No score as we head to the top of the fourth. Second time around for the Phillies. Yes, Spain hitting well. Harang pitching well. Gio really good early. Top of the fourth, Ben Revere, base hit to right, a clean single, first time up. Phillies are going to try to give the Nats a little help the next few days. They're heading to New York. They came from Colorado on this trip. It's their third 10 day trip of the year already. Yeah. Ben Revere doing the limbo. Well, some of the hitters have asked Ben May today, how low will you go? <laughs> He's had that good zone down there for Gio. That's a big breaking ball that's pulled foul on the bunt attempt, strike two. For the Nats, three in Chicago, day game tomorrow, two night games, day off Thursday, and then next weekend in Cincinnati. <laughs> the bat boy just came out of the dugout and took the bat away from Ben Revere. Dude, I'm going to need that. He's hustling, though. He's hustling. Hey, the bat was not over. That was good. Oh. Hey, that's a hustle mistake, right? <laughs> hey, dude, I might need that. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Target in. Revere up the middle. Danny Espinosa picks it. Guns him out. Fourth inning underway. Five hitters in a row for Gio. Starting with that Cesar Hernandez double play ball. Let's check out the little thief again. Grabs the bat. Wait, hey. Wait, hey. 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 Give me that bat. Now go back to the dugout. <laughs> Strange things happen to visiting teams here at National <laughs> Park. Lulled into a stupor during batting practice, and now their bats are getting swiped. A little during at bats. A little kleptomaniac. <laughs> By the way, the Phillies did an in-game report on the Nats batting practice music during their telecast yesterday, and a Phillies official was quoted as saying that might be dealt with when the Nationals come back to Philadelphia. Desmond ranging far, gunning high. Zimmerman not able to get back down on the bag. That'll be a base hit. couple of athletes on both ends of that play. Well, very instinctive play by Ryan Zimmerman. Great play by Desmond, but when he doesn't feel his foot come on the bag, he takes his glove and tries to touch the base and beat Freddie Galvis there. Great range by Desmond. He knew because Galvis can run, he had to get rid of it quick. And Zimmerman trying to touch the bag with his glove. Pretty good hops by Ryan Zimmerman, by the way. Yeah. But I mean, and who even out. thinks of that? You know, most guys go in the air, they're going to swipe at the runner. Ryan trying to get the bag. That was really something. Well, he was on the far side of the bag, so there was no way to swipe at the runner. He would have been past the bag, so he tried to reach it with his glove. He acts like he's been playing over there for a long time. He's not acting like it. He's doing it. It's been fun to watch. Darren Ruff, 6-4-3 double play ball first time. I would just kind of to your BP music comment. If, if the Phillies are worried about that, I feel like it, it's their in their focus heads. isn't where it should be. <laughs> Ninety-one on the heater outside half. 
Counts even 1-1. One, one. Been a busy day on the left side of that infield. Yeah, and I thought they were just using your iPod for visiting batting practice. Your iTunes. Kirk? No? That's no. Not, I thought you were just no, plugging my, in. No, my stuff's better than I that. You just plug it in your phone. No. <laughs> You might be surprised at some of the things that are on there. <laughs> Three and one. Geo misses. There's the walk. Well, if you Two remember, on the one out. excuse me, Clark. If you remember the fourth inning last time for Geo, that was where it all kind of came unraveled. We mentioned all the ground outs first time through. He was perfect, and then a leadoff walk in the fourth to Jacoby Ellsbury, then a single to Chris Young, another walk to Teixeira. McCann reached on a fielder's choice. Chase Headley hit a double, single, single. So the fourth inning was a problem for Geo last time, and he's trying to get through it here this time. And the Nets got him off the hook with a three run fifth, the run in the sixth, and then of course the Zimmerman walk off heroics later. Remember, he's got that good sinker going today, and he's got a couple of double plays. That's what he's looking for right here, right now. Then Franco hit one on the ground to Desmond first time up. Goes with the curveball and steals strike one. Jammed and Danny Espinosa there for the second out. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank, with their minor league report, former Louisville Cardinal Justin Amlung at Hagerstown and throwing the ball well. Originally drafted by the Cubs. So he's got the ERA going. And the uh, other teams aren't hitting against him. Here's Jeff Francoeur, base it up the middle first time. Good change up right there, 85. First pitch, Hacker likes the first pitch fastball. Nice call by Lobaton, good pitch by Gio. And 19th official at bat between these two. Frank Corr hits one hard to left. Galvis around third. Clint Robinson has it deflect off him, and that'll be another error as everybody moves up. Ruff ends up at third. The hitter, Frank Corr, to second on Clint Robinson's first error after the RBI single. You know, nice adjustment by Frank Kors sitting on the changeup after he swung through one, base it to left, and this is where it gets weird. Kind of an in-between hop, hits him in the heel, and maybe a little bit of a panic right there as Jeff Frank Kors gets all the way into second. You see the hop hit him in the heel, then he reaches for it, misses, and now he got second and third, two outs. And Cesar Hernandez up. Jeff Frank Kors, 13th RBI of the year, and he's two for two. Curveball for a strike. Hernandez 6-4-3 double play ball. First time. No way to read. 
reach 93 up there. Gonzalez with his fifth strikeout. Phillies pick up a run on a couple of singles around a walk. Now time for the offense to get busy. Still only three runs in this series. Cruising on Memorial Weekend. Wait a minute. Wow. A straight header. He's Tom cut. Jefferson has not won a race this year, and he almost caught Abe there. That's seven for Abraham Lincoln. Crowd still buzzing. They just, wow. <laughs> Freight Rail Works do up what the Nets have done this season. Various stats here and there. Clint Robinson. Fly ball to center field first time up. Still trying to gather ourselves after watching George go down so hard. That was. Mm. He'll be okay. They have a doctor with a huge head in the back. Okay. He knows all about head wounds, head injuries. When three quarters of your body is ahead, they got it covered. Clint Robinson cleanly in the right center. He's going to motor around the bag and head for second. They get the ball back in quickly, but Clint Robinson has his fourth extra base hit as a net. A triple. And now three doubles. Jeff Frank Kerr got a late jump on this. I don't know if he saw the ball off the bat, but once it was hit up the middle, he kind of stood there for a click and then went after the ball. Good swing by Robinson. But I thought he's thinking that Herrera has this. Then he realizes I better get over there. Quick throw in, but a leadoff double. Second time today for the Nats. You remember Denard Span started this game with a double. Now Clint Robinson leads off the fourth with a double, third of the year. And there was a time when Jeff Francoeur was just about the best throwing right fielder in baseball. 121 career assists. Here's Lobatone. Now, this is the second time today the Nats have had a runner at second base leading off an inning. See, this is a situation, even though it's a one nothing game, if you're Jose Lobaton, it's not give up my at-bat and hit a 14-hopper to second. 
you get a 2-0 count, you're at the bottom of the order. You think about driving Clint Robinson in to the right side, not just hitting the ground ball to second. Maybe later in the count, but you know, with eight-hole hitter on deck and the pitcher coming up, you just don't want to give yourself up. 3-0. One nothing Phillies. Then that's a chance to have a quick answer for that. Here in the fourth inning, they've out hit Philadelphia five four. That is a base hit. Clint Robinson coming around. He will score. And Jose Lobatone has driven in six runs in his last six games. Well, you love the green light by Matt Williams right there. Give the skipper some credit because with a guy like Aaron Harang, you're not guaranteed a 3-1 fastball. So if you take right here, who knows what you're getting 3-1, but you do know you're getting a 3-0 fastball. So exactly what we're talking about. Didn't give himself up. Hit the ball to the right side. But instead of just a 15 hopper to second, he drove it up the middle. And you see the reaction at first base. Nice at bat by Jose Lobatone. And we'll start this one all over again. He's now seven for his last 19. Here comes Danny Espinosa, who bunted for a base hit first time up. Second inning today, the Nats have had more than one hit. Harang has not had a 1 2 3 inning. He'll get a visit from Cameron Rupp. Just smart baseball right there. When you're facing a guy that, you know, you're not guaranteed a 3-1 heater. Green light all the way, and he took advantage. Nicely done. Espinosa 307 last 22 games. Then with a base hit today, six of 13 against Harang, who's having a hard time getting the fastball into the strike zone on that offside over there. 10 pitches already this inning without retiring a batter. Driven and look out. First base umpire Bruce Dreckman did some ducking there. I'm surprised every day when I look at the stat sheet, it says Danny Espinosa is only hitting 230 from the left side. It just seems like he has more hits than that, but the timing of his hits has been great. And he'll spit on that two and one. Yeah, I saw the change up early. Fish ain't biting. Nissan will track it. Maybe they'll cut her in here. And you see Cameron Ruff reaching across the plate. Pitch track liked it. Gio Gonzalez on deck. And we've seen Danny Espinosa foul off more two strike pitches this year than ever before in his career. He's been able to keep some at bats alive. He takes the walk. 
That's a great at bat by a number eight hitter or any hitter. And now Gio can move a couple of guys ahead. He already has four sacrifice bunts this year. On to Chicago tomorrow. Tana Roark will get the start against Suyoshi Wada of the Cubs. Kyle Hendricks and Jordan Zimmerman in the ball game on Tuesday. Another night game on Wednesday. We'll have Max Scherzer and John Lester. What a matchup that is. And then on to Cincinnati for three after a day off Thursday. And of course, Johnny and Ray next extra half hour before and after every one of our yes. telecasts. That's what I'm talking about. Matta dude. Sporting the full hawk. Got it all painted up. I mean, it's Memorial Day weekend. You just rock that thing all weekend, don't you? <laughs> Tomorrow. Maybe beyond schools, yeah. just about out. I mean, that's sport the colors. I love it. Yeah. I think you should do that, Carp. While you do yoga. Yeah. Well, I already showed you my balance post today during commercial. <laughs> with, with your iPod playing in the visiting team. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's just scary even thinking about all of that together. Geo lays one down. That is perfect. 3 4, sacrifice good. Lobatone to third, Espinosa second base. Nicely done. You know, at least this year. Gio's been the best bunter on the staff. That's the most sacrifices by any of our pitchers. Fister has three. Everybody else, two or fewer. And a big spot for Denard Spann, who's put good swings on the ball twice today. A double to right center. And then a fly ball to fairly deep right center. Catcher running at third. Espinosa behind Lobatone. And Denard not getting too eager takes one up and in. We got a good fundamental offensive inning working right now for the Nats. Lead off double. You got him over and in. Runners on first and second, nobody out. You get the bunt down, get him over. Now Denard Span trying to continue that by picking him up. Runner on third, less than two outs. Two and oh. And you talked about Harang's command earlier and leaving some balls over the plate. Now he's been unable to find the plate in this inning with his fastball. Beautiful day, big crowd. The Nats have rallied to tie. Looking to take command here in the bottom of the fourth. Span a check swing. Runners have to freeze. That's not what you want on a 2 0 count. Two down. The Washington Nationals fans choice flex packs are on sale now choose from some of the season's best matchups when you pick four games you get one free and that guy right there with his arms in the air goes home with you go to nationals.com slash flex to pick your games right now. Second and third two outs now. Desmond has bounced to short and flared a single to right. Ball up. And to the third deck and went. Desmond got jammed, and the last two hitters didn't get good swings at Aaron Harang. Aaron Ruff takes care of that. Washington now scoring a run and stranding seven.
We serve today for a better tomorrow. Always one of the great moments at our ballpark every day of the season. Desmond and Harper appreciating their sacrifice on this very special weekend in our nation. Did you hear motorcycles this morning? I did. I've heard them over on the other side of the river for the last two days. Rolling thunder in town for Memorial Weekend. Top of the fifth inning, bottom of the order for the Phils. Herrera, Rupp, and Harang. Gio did a real nice job of getting out of that fourth inning. Settled down nicely, struck out Hernandez. Had runners at second and third. That could prove to be a huge part of this game. And yeah, that's a big thing for Gio, not letting innings get away. If he can keep close, he's got all the stuff in the world to stick around deep into a ball game. Five Ks today. 2 and 0. Into center. Pretty well hit. Span turns one way, then the other. He's waiting for it. He knew right where to go for that first out. Nice adjustment. It's never fun in a day game to take your eyes off the baseball. And the reason is the sun. So when you break over one shoulder and you have to turn around, that ball was hit high enough so you had plenty of time to find it again. But you see the glasses lighten up. Gio Gonzalez talking to himself. Didn't like where the pitch was to Herrera. Cameron Rupp, a chopper, foul, third base side. Gio's gone five his last two times out. Seven his previous two at New York and at home against the Braves. He had gone at least six in his first four starts. He's got a good hook. It's been there all day. No balls, two strikes. Five strikeouts, one walk, four hits to this point. Pirates have picked up a run. Bottom of the fourth, they lead the Mets, one nothing. 0 oh, 2. When we go to Chicago, we're going to be playing a team that's right in the race. Going into today, the Cubs only two and a half back of St. Louis. I think the effect of losing Adam Wayne right now, a couple of weeks in, has affected the Cardinals. And the Cubs continue to play solid baseball with that good young core of players they have. Cubs are 13 and 8 at Wrigley Field this year, and they're 7 and 3 in their last 10. Eighty-six and it just missed three and two. Tie ball game. You want to go after the number eight hitter here. Don't give him a free pass and give Harang a chance to bunt him to scoring position. That ball driven right center and it's moving away from Span. Denard can't cut it off and Cameron Rupp, his ninth hit of the year, gets him to second base with one out. A good swing right there by Rupp. Gio Gonzalez with a challenge fastball. Just said, here it is, hit it. Inside out swing. And like you said, Carp, it was tailing away from Denard Span the whole way. Didn't have a chance. Just want to hold him to a double right there. So no rush to get the ball in. 25 year old backup catcher Cameron Rupp, a former Texas Longhorn. Here's Harang who struck out, swinging first time. And he goes to the right side. Danny Espinosa will grab the two hopper and throw him out. That's a productive out for Aaron Harang. Why? Because Ben Rivera is a guy that can fly. He has infield single in him. So he advances the one out double 
to third with two outs, and you're thinking, well, no big deal. But Rivera's a guy who can bunt. He's a guy that can fly. And now an infield single scores a run for the Phillies, so a productive out right there for the Phillies pitcher. And he's had four hits in this series. Escobar actually in front of the baseline between second and third now. Counts even. Yeah, it's a chopper that got Jose Lobaton slamming right into his mask. That sticker's been good for Gio Gonzalez all year. Check that out. Seven ground outs for Gio so far in this one. Yeah, five in the first two innings. And the curveball had Revere leaning, but he laid off 2-2. With the target in, he is jammed and fouls it. Eleven days ago, the Phillies were 11 and 23. Right now, they're 19 and 26, battling the Nats. Right down to the wire in a couple of games. In this series, and Gio has that one. Again, a good job of shutting down the Phils after they had a runner in scoring position with one out. Fielding his position well, so add two more ground ball outs, eight in that inning, or rather in the game for Gio. Mazda do ups for the Nats. Bottom five, three, four, five, and what they've done this month 
Ryan Zimmerman's batting average not as high as the other guys, but he's driven in a lot of runs. Escobar, ground ball to third, fly ball to center. Good take. Mets have scored in the top of the fifth. They're tied with the Pirates 1 1. Fastball on 2 0, and Escobar off to the right. Nice catch by a fan right there. Brought his glove, front row. Nicely done. Love when people bring their gloves to the park. Challenge fastball, and it's heading for the scoreboard. Escobar will one hop it. That ball about 375 the other way. He keeps on chugging. This will be close, and he is safe at third base. First triple as a net for Yunel Escobar. Well, he was thinking double, and then something happened with Odubel Herrera and the ball here, and it took a second. Watch. The bottom of your screen, Escobar kind of cruising right there, and then he's thinking, no, he doesn't have the ball. I'm going for three. Dive into third. Good hustle by Escobar. He calls himself safe. <laughs> Watch him call himself safe. I mean, he checks his own swings when he checks swings at the plate. He appeals to himself, and then when he gets to third on this, watch him call himself safe. Safe. <laughs> Infield not in for Bryce Harper here who has a base hit and a walk today. And Bryce trying to waste no time and putting the Nats on top. That was Janelle Escobar's 50th hit of the year. The first national to 50. Bryce right on his heels with 48. Ian Desmond has 43. Oh, two. Here we go. They're frustrated because he chased that one out of the zone, but he's telling himself, make the ball be up. That one maybe just a hair too high. And now he's got to fight. We saw Cameron Rupp reach up, and he got it where he asked for it. These are major league baseball ranks, not just National League. Nelson Cruz, 17 home runs. Stanton, 40 RBIs. Harper up the middle. That'll get the job done. And that is RBI number 40 for Bryce Harper. The Nets take the lead 2-1. It's like driving 100 right there, folks. Take what the game gives you. And especially with two strikes. And how many times have you seen it when there's a runner on third, nobody out, the first guy doesn't get the job done, the second guy presses, and then you don't get anybody in. So Bryce Harper, a two-strike count, hit that one right on the screws, but Freddie Galvis played him perfectly. RBI number 40, Nats up 2-1, to one. nicely done. So the last two innings have been pretty good fundamental baseball by the Nats. They just couldn't get that run home extra run or two last inning. Ryan Zimmerman 0 for 2. Strikeout and a comebacker. So 17 of Bryce's 40 RBI this year have come in an at-bat that started 0-2. That's impressive. That is really impressive. Ryan lays off the slider, two and one. Ryan has six career hits, a homer, three RBIs. Updated numbers now for Bryce Harper. Those are Zimmerman's career numbers against Harang, and he fouls one back. 
Well, I'm pretty sure this next road trip won't be the last time Bryce Harper visits Cincinnati this summer. Mm, good call. Home of the All-Star game. Ryan thought that thing was so slow it might drop back in. <laughs> and he's talking to Cameron Rupp about it. Maybe he has to catch it. What was that call? Or maybe knowing Ryan's sense of humor, he's saying, I swear, I'm going to swing, I'm going to take a full swing today sometime, I promise. <laughs> yeah, that had an ephus sort of look to it. Two seven one Nats, one five zero Phils, and a three two to Zimmerman. It's getting some good rips in. Fastball. Out of play. Foul tipped into Rupp's mitt. Two down here in the fifth. Ladies, it's all about you Thursday, June 18th at Nats Park when the Nats take on the Rays. Enjoy a night out with the girls, including dancing, live music, wine, food samples, and player visits with the purchase of this special game ticket. Ladies 21 and older will receive a Nationals acrylic wine glass with lanyard and access to pregame party. All right. First pitch change up, Clint Robinson. That's the shortstop Galvis over there to grab it. So the inning starts well for the Nats. Escobar's triple, Harper's grounder, RBI number 40, Nats lead. And Roark. Tanner Roark, Wilmington, Illinois will be there tomorrow. The Nats are going to play the Cubbies at 220 tomorrow. Tanner, first start of the year. His relief ERA, 2.66. He'll be facing Siyoshi Wada. Nats haven't seen him before. They were digging it, weren't they? Well, I talked to Tanner day before the game. He said the right field bleachers are open in Wrigley. So he also said it's going to be crazy and the whole town's going to be there. So we can't wait. Yeah, isn't it funny how he gets his first start there so they know exactly what day to come. 
Tanner told me last week that if he was still in the bullpen, they were going to come Monday anyway, but it really turned out well for all of his buddies back home. Sixth inning now. Here's a key inning for Geo. Two, three, four for the Phils. Galvis a base hit last time. And that's on the outside edge. No balls, two strikes. Geo's thrown 72 pitches, 49 strikes. The only problem with that is the, the corner tap in Wilmington, Illinois will be empty. Yeah, ghost town. <laughs> they're, they're all going to be in right field. And we can't wait to see you guys. So well, maybe they can close Monday night. I mean, just... that was the highlight of that trip last time. <laughs> Galvis to right center. Harper, he'll get there. Took Bryce a moment to get a read on it. He's played some great right field this year. Phillies box single hits in the first and second wiped out by double plays and then fourth inning Galvis a one out single after a walk to Darren Ruff Jeff Francoeur got them their only run on a clean line drive to left Geo's been great since so Ruff 0 for 1 double play ball and that base on balls and the curveball is low Gio, I thought he might have a little extra gas in the tank today because he'd only thrown 84 pitches and 85 in his last two starts at Arizona and here against the Yankees. One ball, one strike. Rupp hits one well to right. Harper toward the corner and back, and the ball hits off the wall. Catches it on a fly. Rifle to second, and a double for Darren Ruff. You know, it's a one run game top of the sixth inning. But I like what Bryce Harper did right here. Everybody talks about him being reckless and running into walls. He knew that he had a chance on this. He had a beat. He was going full speed. But when he realized that the wall might be a factor, he pulls up and plays it on a hop. Lived to fight another day. Maybe Bryce Harper crashes into the wall a couple of years ago going for that. But he pulls up there. And I kind of like what I just saw. Here's the young slugger Franco who bats cleanup today for the Phils. Soft line drive to Danny Espinosa last time. Bounced out to Desmond first time. I think that's a perfect example of playing hard yet playing under control. Yeah. It, it looked like he had a beat on it. The ball got over his head. But he played it off the wall and almost threw him out second. Yeah, good thing Ruff was not admiring that one. He had to run hard to get in. Yeah, my philosophy as an outfielder was, you know, I'm going to try to get the ball over my head, but if you make a good pitch, I want to take base hits away. And if a ball's hit over my head, well, you know, I'm going to do my best to get it. But I'd rather take hits away than extra base hits away and reward the pitcher for making a good pitch. Oh, two, and he gets it with a curveball in the dirt. Gio Gonzalez using the hook beautifully for strikeout number six. You know, the whole sequence right there to Franco was nice. And he goes with the curveball down. Thinking fastball in. You see the shoulder hips flying wide open. He was looking for something else. Well, here's the uh, guy that's been bugging Gio for a couple of years. Jeff Francoeur, two hits today. Eight for 19 career against Gonzalez with three batted in. Nice looking fastball at the knees outside edge. Key to getting Frank Cor out, get ahead. And then you might not have to throw him a strike. Yeah, 
Here's the changeup. Change up the signs, maybe right here. And that's ball two. You got a base, you don't have to give in right here. You got a guy on deck who's hit into a double play and, sh and he struck him out last time. So two for two in the box, 0 for two on deck. Make him hit your pitch. He hits it well. Left field, Clint Robinson right there to grab it. Lead off. Line drive to right, then the one out double, and Gio Gonzalez continues to put zeros on the board against the Phils. Eighth series in a row. Come out to Nats Park on Thursday, June 4th. Guess what you get? A Ryan Zimmerman bobblehead. Who doesn't want that? First 25,000 fans will get one. That's presented by PNC Bank. Special bobblehead commemorates Zim's memorable walk-off home run at Nats Park on opening day, March 30th, 2008. All right. I want one of those. I want one of those. And I want one of those. Against Peter Moylan and the Atlanta Braves in a one-game series. First pitch swinging, Jose Lobaton up the middle. Freddy Galvis playing that way for the first out, sixth inning. Nats box hits in every inning so far today, including two in the first and two in the fourth. And then the Lobaton big RBI single on a 3-0 pitch in the fourth. And the Bryce Harper RBI ground ball after the Escobar triple in the fifth. So good contributions up and down the lineup. Danny Espinosa, a bunt base hit and a walk. Started the inning at 87. A couple of innings ago, the Mets had a run in, guys all over the bases, didn't score, and then the Pirates answered with three in the bottom of the fifth. Andrew McCutcheon is homered for the second straight day. He has seven. Bucks four, Mets one. What's the Nats' magic number? It's about 112. All right. It's more than that, actually. <laughs> I think. One, two.
Espinoza high in the air to right. Didn't quite get it. Jeff Francoeur using his bare hand for shade right there. Two outs. Hey, Nats fans, you can't make it to Nats Park. Masson's got you covered. Follow at Masson Nationals on Instagram for sites around the ballpark, behind the scenes moments, exclusive contests, and so much more. Again, search at Masson Nationals on Instagram. Love Instagram. Geo, 0 for 1, sacrifice bunt two got, innings ago. Got the gloves. Nata dudes are ready. Want a foul ball. Geo to left. Pretty far away from where Revere was playing, but he'll catch up with it with that great speed of his. Well, for a moment, we thought the home run streak was about to go to four seasons. A little bit short. Just off the barrel, just off the sweet spot. Good swing by Gio Gonzalez. of Arlington, Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria. Two to one, Nats. Going to the top of the seventh. You want to see some Gio Gonzalez strikeouts? You say? Well, we got them for you. And he's had a good changeup going today. Good sinker down the zone. Struck out the side in the third inning. Herrera, Rupp, and Harang. And then Cesar Hernandez in the fourth. And how about... Franco in the sixth. Gio Gonzalez got it going on, attacking the strike zone with all three pitches here today against the Phillies. It's 84 pitches in six innings, 58 strikes. Getting toward the bottom of the Phillies order here. If they get a man aboard, they would probably hit for Aaron Harang, who's at 95 pitches. But Hernandez, Herrera, and Rupp before that. Hernandez double play ball in the second, swinging strike out in the fourth. Right hander Aaron Barrett, left hander Matt Grace. That's added Taylor Jordan to the bullpen today, sent out AJ Cole. Seventh pitch that Jose Lobaton has made a borderline pitch look like a strike today. Trying for number eight right there. Three and one.
missed on. No, he didn't. How about that? The low zone up again. Ben May, a bit of a delayed call right there, and Hernandez was on his way to first. Well, in a one-run game, that's the eighth pitch that Jose Lobatone has turned into a strike. Watch the frame by Lobatone right here. Pick it up, put it in the strike zone. Ben May is buying it. So you got to get the leadoff man out. Look at this. Just catching the top of the baseball, <laughs> pulling it up, holding it there. <laughs> And that one's all on Jose Lobatone. If your glove goes with the, the pitch and takes it out of the strike zone, that's ball four. He caught the top of the baseball bar in the strike zone for strike three. In a one-run game in the seventh, that's a huge play, folks. We talk about diving plays and all kinds of other things being huge plays. That one right there, circle that. That was big. Cesar Hernandez in disbelief. And the 0-1 will spin Herrera out of there. a hitter a little uncertain on the next pitch if you drop a brick, big breaking ball on him like Gio did. Well, I like the pitch before. Odubel Herrera has been, for lack of a better term, very comfortable in the batter's box against the Nats all season long. And after that, maybe he wasn't so comfortable. One ball, two strikes with one out. Base hit. He's been a tough out for the Nats. Three for ten in this series, but it seems like more than that. Number eight hitter Cameron Rupp, and we'll see who comes out on deck. It's harangue for the moment. And Matt Williams on his way. The applause has already started after six and a third for Gio. Outs. Six hits in six and a third innings. You see the arsenal for Aaron Barrett. Two seam fastball run to the arm side, 94, 96 miles an hour. Breaking ball is a slider. He does ha have a changeup. I don't think he's used it yet this year. 21st appearance for Barrett. League hitting 224 against the Nats right hander. Cameron Rupp 0 for 2 against him. Herrera, six out of seven stealing bases. 
Lobitz on one for seven this year, throwing out opposing base runners. With the runner holding, it's way inside. Trying to make it eight out of ten. Watch how low Herrera gets in his lead. Holding again, and that is going to drop in front of Bryce Harper, who comes up firing and out at second base. Bryce Harper, fourth outfield assist of the year. A 9 6 force out. Come on, who does that? Are you serious? And Herrera had the weight. Bryce Harper charged the ball. So the, the fact that Bryce is coming hard to this baseball, as a base runner, you have to wait. He fields it on a hop, throws a bullet right on the money. Ian Desmond fired up after he throws him out, gives him some props. What a play in a one-run game by Bryce Harper. Charging that baseball as hard as he did made Herrera freeze. He had to because he knows that Harper has range. Once the ball hit the ground and hopped, it was too late. Nicely done. And now that Chase Utley has been announced as the pinch hitter, Aaron Barrett departs. And we'll see Matt Grace. What a sequence. Box Lee getting 317 right he's 364 pretty good exchange of base runners too as far as speed goes on that play yeah yeah Herrera retired catcher aboard Chase Utley swinging the bat well lately he by the way is one for three as a pinch hitter this year Facing Grace for the first time, and that's in there, 91.
Utley will pull it foul. One ball and two strikes. Well, whatever happens here with Chase Utley versus Matt Grace, we give the skipper, Matt Williams, a lot of credit. He knew it was either going to be Ryan Howard, Chase Utley, or Grady Sizemore in this spot. So he had a lefty ready to rock and roll, and he's got the matchup that he wants. Chase Utley, probably watching low strikes from the dugout all day, didn't pull the trigger there, and he's gone. So are the Phillies in the seventh. Another good frame by Jose Loba. Oh, man, is he valuable back there. Nicely done. Phillies are stranded for today. It's our Hyundai seventh inning stretch at Nationals Park. What a beautiful day. Well played, well pitched ball game. The Nats, 2-1. Produced to retransmit it in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Well, I think you said it Friday night. Some series you slug, some series are close. You play defense, you pitch well. And tight ball games. We've had two tight games in this series. Nets have already won one, trying to make it an eighth straight series win with another tight game today. I mean, they're doing all the little things right, minus driving in a couple of runs, a couple of innings ago. In, in, in close games like this, the little things are so big. And, yeah. and I know I've been wearing it out, but Jose Lobaton is firing me up back there. The way he has the, the, the smooth hands. I mean, he's almost like watching like an Omar Vizquel play shortstop the way he's taking borderline pitches that if you go with him you take him out of the zone but when you pick up the top half of the ball and bring him in the zone he today for me has been the difference in this baseball game behind the plate and Gio pitch well had a good hook going today threw his fastball for strikes when he needed to and uh, you know the Nats is getting a couple of hits here and there and now into the Phillies bullpen with the bottom of the seventh rolling around is Justin DeFreitas, who seems to pitch a lot when these teams get together, is out there for Philadelphia. Appeared in the ball game yesterday, pitched a scoreless ninth against Harper, Tyler Moore, and Wilson Ramos. And the 27-year-old right-hander will get the top of the order here. Denard Span one for three with a double. Two for five career against the Phillies right-hander. with a double 
first inning. Fly ball in the third, ground ball in the fourth. Now, two seam fastball slider change from DeFreitas. Fastball's averaging 91 this year, slider 82, change up in the mid 80s. Span a hot shot to the gap. He is off and running. Second extra base hit today. Thinking three until Herrera got there to stop him. Wow, talk about some swings by Span in this game. Well, that, that was a beautiful swing. The ball got in the gap, but could you hear the crowd? Everybody yelling three at the same time right when this ball got in the gap. You could hear almost 40,000 in unison yelling three as he barrels up the baseball, hits it in the gap, and what, for the one? Two, third time today, a leadoff double for the Nats. Denard has two of them. Has been a rash of two hit games lately. Here's Ian Desmond. Showing bunt and pulling the bat back on a 94 heater. Low part of the zone. Desmond one for three today with a base hit to right, giving him a nine game hitting streak. He's 0 for 6 career with a walk against Justin DeFreitas. Matt Williams going straight sacrifice here with Ian Desmond in a one-run game. I like it. Desmond deadens it beautifully. Perfect bunt. Over to third span on the first out. Just love that style of baseball. I really do. Nice call by Matt Williams. He is managing this game flawlessly today. Just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lights. And let's go back to the fifth inning. You know Escobar leading the thing off with what he thinks is a double in the gap, but all of a sudden, some stuff starts to happen down there on the warning track, and he stretches it into a triple and calls himself safe. Now he has a chance to drive in a run here after the nice bunt by Ian Desmond. 14 RBIs for Escobar. Facing DeVretis for the first time, infield in. And he took a little bit off the breaking ball, did Justin DeFreitas there. Fastball hit hard to third. Back in safely, spin. And then Escobar thrown out. Heads up play by Michael Franco. Heads up play by Denard Spann to get back. Hope he's okay after diving back into that bag. I mean, this ball was smoked infield in. Spann with a shuffle step. Has to dive back into the bag. Good read by Spann. Nice play. By the Phillies third baseman. Jake Diekman is in their bullpen. Don't know how long he's been throwing, but long enough. He'll be in to face Bryce Harper. So Ryan Sandberg's like, he likes Diekman versus Harper versus DeFreitas versus Zimmerman. So he'll make the change. There's a lot of verses going on here. And Bryce is going to see a left-handed pitcher, Jake Diekman.
two to one wheels turning lefty lefty matchup coming up. I right, see the arsenal and the fastball average is 96 slider 84 and he does throw a change up at 88 miles an hour. He's thrown it 6% of the time according to my stuff. 19th game for Deepman. Lefty sitting 333. So Ryan Sandberg going with the left hander versus Bryce Harper. He could have opted to keep DeFreitas in the game walk Bryce Harper and pitch to Ryan Zimmerman. So we'll see how this one works. For Ryan Sandberg. And I think Ryan Zimmerman has so much respect for his ability to drive in runs, it forced the Phillies manager to bring in a lefty to face Bryce Harper. And they have another right hander warming for Zimmerman, Jenmar Gomez. So here's Bryce. Infield hit, a walk, and an RBI ground ball. He's one for eight career against Diekman with one walk and four strikeouts. You know, I like a slugfest as much as anybody, but these two to one games with all the strategy, the small ball, the, the bringing lefties into, I mean, this is great stuff. I mean, this is a baseball game here today. I love it. 1 1. Meanwhile, the Pirates lead the Mets 7 to 1 in Pittsburgh, trying to sweep. Harper to left. Ball falling. Ball falling. RBI for Bryce Harper. And the major league lead with 41. The Nats lead 3-1. to one. Well, that's how that matchup went. And you have the hottest hitter on the planet in Bryce Harper. Ryan Sandberg choosing to pitch to the hottest hitter on the planet based on a one-for-eight matchup. Harper versus Diekman. And watch him fight to get his hands inside the baseball. And you're wondering if Diekman was going to feature that slider to Harper. He chose to go with the fastball in. Harper with the inside-out swing. A little fist pump. Some applause from the dugout. And Harper fired up, making this ball game 3-1. to one. That was some good stuff. And now Sandberg leaves the lefty in to face Zimmerman. Ryan 2-for-5 with a double against Jake Diekman. That run charged to Justin DeFreitas. After the double he gave up to Denard Spann. If the Nats can get runners on, get them over, get them in, play small ball, bunt guys over, advance runners from second with nobody out consistently all season long with their staff. I mean, the sky's a limit on how many games they can win. Zimmerman, deep right center. Heading for the scoreboard. Takes a hop to the right. Harper will score. 4-1 Washington. And the reason why Bryce Harper got to face Diekman is because of the guy staying on second base and what he just did. But you were wondering, you know, if you're going to bring in a, a lefty to face Harper, don't you have to bring in a righty to face Ryan Zimmerman? He had one warming. He had one warming up. He chose not to do it. And a guy that knows a lot about driving in runs with a clutch double here with two outs to make it four to one. Ryan Zimmerman's 32nd run batted in. That ties him with Adrian Gonzalez of the Dodgers. Michael Taylor now bats for Clint Robinson to get the Nats a lefty righty matchup plus some defense in the last two innings. Taylor 0 for 1 against the lefty. I'll tell you what Bryce has to take advantage of opportunity right now because if this thing keeps going the way it is he's not going to get a chance to drive in runs. He's going to start getting the Barry Bonds treatment and every time first base is open he's going to start getting walked as this season moves forward if he keeps doing what he's doing right now. Taylor jammed, left side, Franco. What a good inning for the Nats. It all started with a spin double. There was a sacrifice by Desmond. Then Harper and Zimmerman get the RBIs.
with what he's done at the plate, a couple of RBIs, RBI ground out right there in the fifth inning to make it two to one, give his ball club the lead. How about this play? Told you to circle that one, it'll be big in a one run game. Tough read for Herrera, he was caught in the middle, and then this off of Jake Diekman, little inside out job down the left field line, scores Denard Span. Have a day, Bryce Harper, in the shocking news department. Left-hander Matt Gray still in the ball game. Top of the order, Revere. Then Galvis and Rupp, or rather Ruff. It's kind of interesting, too. He had the one batting glove on. Brian Sandberg went to the lefty, and he took his one batting glove off and went without batting gloves right there for the base hit. I have to ask him on the plane what that was all about. And Dan Coco told us he chucked it into the stands for a souvenir. Bryce with a nearly perfect day. Two hits, a walk, and the only time he made an out, he drove in a run. Revere taking a couple, 1-1. One, one. Nationals now a three-run lead after trailing by one run for an entire half inning today. Right in there. Lobatone set up away and Grace threw it in there. Just a little bit of a reach back. Jammed him severely. Escobar's got to be quick. He is. One out. Geo had seven today. Toyota K's for kids. Washington area Toyota dealers helping children and their families. $37 to the Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout. Thanks to our Washington area Toyota dealers. Well, Matt Grace, a good job. He gets Utley. He gets Revere. Both of his lefty and lefty matchups turn out well. And here comes Casey Jansen. one today start checking out the important news because smart people covering the important news stories from all the right places on on WUSA 9 the morning news difference tomorrow morning starting at 425 on WUSA 9 Casey Jansen going back to back here and I asked him this morning how did it feel after last night at a 1 2 3 ninth inning eight pitches seven strikes he said I feel great so going back to back at the big league level for the first time this year. Like the energy on the mound. First time we saw him. Curveball was nice.
I'm just thinking, what channel do the dumb people report the news? Because that's the one I want to watch. You got me on that one. All right. Tony Galvis, no chance to catch up with that. I still love how he's ready to rock and roll. Check it out. A lot of energy out there. Another strikeout by the Nats. Seven by Geo, one by Grace, one by Jansen. Two outs here in the eighth. And another great we'll trade. Excuse me, Kurt, by Jose Lobaton. Watch. Pull it up. Twist to the wrist. Smooth hands. Watch him present this as a strike. It's down, might be out, with just a little turn of the glove. Now the whole glove is in the strike zone versus maybe just the tip of the ball. I got that as 11 for Lobatone today, and I might have missed a few. Darren Ruff. Double play ball and a double, a walk in between. String on him at 73. Denard Span is there. And this ball game into the bottom of the eighth. Nats bullpen. They're all doing their jobs. Barrett, Grace, and Jensen in a 4 1 game. Daily Fantasy Baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Enter promo code DUGOUT for free entry. By your local BMW centers. And by visitannapolis.org. Find the Chesapeake experience at visitannapolis.org. Red Loft, the place to be on the weekend here at Nats Park. Four to one as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. For every Nationals walk here, first Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes 50 bucks to support girls on the run, D.C. The Nats have drawn 147 walks for a total of $7,350. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. All right, here's the man who was warming up and appeared to be ready when Ryan Zimmerman came to the plate last inning, Jen Mar Gomez. First pitch swinging, Jose Lobatone, his first career at bat against the right hander. Still a safe situation, so Drew Storen started to get ready. The Nats have 7 8 9 here. 
Well, Casey Jansen goes back to back days at the big league level and looking great. Lobaton, an RBI single, up the middle to tie the game back in the fourth. Ninety three with sink and movement away. You make a four seam fastball, two seam fastball, average is ninety two. He'll cut the fastball in the upper eighties, slider to go with it, occasional change up. Under the radar MVP for today's game. I know I've been talking about it a lot, but they just. It's like watching. A smooth infielder play shortstop. Watching Jose catch. Pretty good change up there for the first out eighth inning. <laughs> Nissan tracking the change up. So here's Danny Espinosa, number eight spot. Wilmer Defoe to hit next. And then setting things up in the ninth inning for Drew Storm. Espinosa, a bunt base hit and a walk today, one for two. And if the Nats score, making it a non save situation, Blake Trinan. Espinosa, hot shot up the middle. Galvis had it fall right at his feet, and that's two down. Actually, that is Franco on a 5 3. Peanuts are back in Woodbridge May 27th through June 2nd. Come out to the Fitz for Jersey giveaway night, Scout campout night, where you can roast marshmallows in a campfire in center field during the game. For all your ticket and promotional information, call the number on your screen or go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, and any other social media to figure it out. Wilmer Defoe, ground ball right side, Cesar Hernandez, and this one flying into the top of the ninth inning. The Nats have a three run cushion for Drew Storm.
had strong numbers in his career coming into this season, but he's taken it to another level this year, and he told me today that that might be partly due to an altered grip on his four-seam fastball. He'd been trying to get that four-seamer straighter. It had previous been, previously been more of like a baby two-seamer, he called it. It had kind of been tailing over the middle of the plate when he'd try and get it on the outside corner to righties and in to lefties. His new grip has allowed that four-seamer to stay straight. He's been able to paint the corners where he wants to. He's getting more swings and misses off of the fastball this year because of that altered grip. And he says that that's been a major factor for him. He likes that two-seamer. He likes that added, ad adjusted four-seam grip now. And he's mixing that in with some solid off-speed stuff. Storen's been fantastic early on this season. He faces four, five, six, top of the ninth. Franco, Francoeur, and Hernandez. Oh, Drew's a tinker. That doesn't surprise me a bit. He's always looking for different grips. Storing face Franco here on Friday night. He had an infield hit up the middle. That was that ball that hit Ian Desmond and then hit Danny Espinosa and deflected into left field. Today, the rookie third baseman 0 for 3. Well, generally speaking, in the three-run save opportunities for Drew, you see more fastballs. In the one-run saves, you'll see more sliders and change-ups. He's a little more aggressive with that four-seamer that Dan was just talking about with a three-run cushion. And a 1-1. There's a big slight piece. This one's a sneaky slider, too, and this is the one he's been throwing lately. Not a lot of sweep to it, and right there you're thinking fastball, right? And just a little subtle break at the end away from the bat. One, two, busted bat. It's hanging up. Michael A. Taylor right there for the first down. That should be gone for a week. Check out tickets for the Toronto series a week from tomorrow. Blue Jays will be here. Then the Cubs follow them to good ball clubs. Although Toronto struggling lately, Nationals.com. Check it out. How about the crowds this weekend? 41,044 today. 41,722 yesterday. And I think the Nats have played the most road games so far in the National League, so they can't wait to get back from the next road trip and just stay in their white unis for a while. It seems like we really haven't had a chance to unpack at home yet this year. So, uh, 23 games on the road so far this year for the Nats. 118,000. 659 seed the series, an average of 39.553. The Nats are fourth in the league in attendance, and I don't think I've ever remembered them being that high in the National League. That ball is scorched toward the scoreboard by Brady Sizemore, hitting for Jeff Francoeur. So the righty lefty matchup goes well for Ryan Sandberg this. Well, you just don't want the tie and run to come to the plate because there's a guy that's hot as heck for the Phillies in their dugout hasn't played yet, Ryan Howard. You know he's lurking somewhere down there with a bat and a helmet on. So Grady Sizemore with that hit, one for four career against Drew Storen. There he is. He's ready to rock. And if he represents the tie and run, he's going to hit for whoever. Here's Cesar Hernandez, 0 for 2 against Drew. And 0 for 3 today. Johnny and Ray are here at the ballpark with the Nets extra. A lot to talk about when this one's done, but some work to do. Pretty big rip by Cesar Hernandez. Who from the left side of the plate is hitting 211. Yeah. 
And he bolts the fastball that just misses near the inside edge. There's a changeup. so late and tight and short for Drew lately that it is tough to pick up. I mean, this thing looks like a fastball. You look at the release point, the spin on it, and it's just subtle. It used to be a big sweeper. Sometimes you see it in the dirt. It's barely breaking, but it's breaking just enough where it's looking like a fastball until you start your hands, and it's too late. Odubel Herrera, one for two against Storin this year. First pitch, 94, right in there. Cut fastball, and Ryan Howard just jumped into the on-deck circle. And by the way, Ryan Howard, four for eight career against Storm. Changeup going on right now to the left handers. Drew Storen with 14. And the Nats win their eighth consecutive series. Twenty-six and eighteen. The Nats have won seven of eight and nineteen of twenty-four. And they've now won nine of their last 11 games at Nationals Park. Gio Gonzalez solid today. Bullpen solid today. The situational hitting as good as I've seen it all season long for the Nats. And it was the